So I was recently in a motorcycle accident and my brand new 2023 Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro was totaled. Now unfortunately, I don't have any footage of this crash. I got a few pictures here and there which I will post up throughout the video, but no footage. And that really plays into kind of the talking point. I'm going to talk about my accident here. Again, not having any footage. So kicking it off, me and my buddy were riding up to Georgia from down here in South Mississippi. We were going to ride the Georgia Traverse. He was on his 300L, I think a 2021 or 22, maybe 21, whatever. Um, he was on his 300L and I was on my Triumph uh, 900 Rally Pro. So again, dual sport with big ADV bike, you know. Anyways, it was real cool. We skipped the interstate, which we could have got there like in five and a half hours or something like that, six hours. But we took all these back roads and, and it probably took us closer to like nine and a half hours or nine hours. You know, it was a really, really fun ride on the, on the back roads there, avoiding all the highways. Really fun. So anyways, we got up there and we actually jumped on a little bit of the trail day one. It was pretty fun. It's kind of like, okay, bam, we've been riding all this road, then right onto some off-road. Um, our trail was cut off because there was a log actually in the road right there. And we kind of stopped. We were like, oh, can we hop up it? Can we go up the mountain and around? And uh, maybe with the dual sport, you could have. But I was like, ah, no, we can't do this. This big 80, we're going to end up in some trouble. So we turned around, went back up the uh, gravel road, uh, cut around and got back on the trail. And started hunting for a campsite. And we found the campsite. It was a little bit later than we preferred. We were setting up in the dark, you know. But um. Ended up ended up being a really nice campsite and working out. So anyways, wake up the next morning and we get riding again, right? Riding the trail on again to Georgia Traverse. Now the Georgia Traverse is uh, some of its connection to the Smoky 500. Y'all watched my previous video where I did the whole Smoky 500. Did that on my uh, 2023 Triumph as well. Awesome ride. But anyway, some of this is part of that. It starts from Alabama, goes up to South Carolina. That was our goal to get over to South Carolina and finish the whole thing. Anyways... So we're riding uh, this whole day. We're in, in Georgia right now. And we get to this part of the split where you can either go around a mountain or down. And we're like, no, let's go down. So we got enough time to really get to the end there. And there's a few cars in this. It's not like extremely technical. It's like loose gravel, a couple switchbacks here and there. Some of the spots can get really rocky and, and quite bumpy out there. Um, but anyways, riding along, getting to the part where we wrecked here. Um, we're coming down the mountain. And I'm talking down the mountain it's uh you know I, I don't know the grade but it was a decent amount right there you kind of coast i'm probably going 30 maybe 35 miles an hour max that's absolute tops i probably say more around 30 right there right and we're just kind of coasting down and i noticed in front of me i'm not i'm not butted up on my buddy either that, that's something i i always take clear like i don't want to be right next to someone right there i want to keep at least Say a car distance, probably more or less two, two and a half car distance, you know? And by the way, on this trail, talking about it not being incredibly technical in all the spots, there are cars on here. There's Jeeps, Tacomas. I think a Ford Fiesta drove past us, so you can kind of see. Like, it's not incredibly technical. It's just loose gravel and such. But again, you got cars coming past you each way there. So anyways, we're coming down, getting to the wreck. We're going down the mountain right here again. Uh, things I want you to keep in mind, I got a 600 pound bike with all of my gear loaded up and everything. We're going downhill. We're on gravel. I do keep ABS active when I'm on road or off road because again, I'm not an aggressive rider as y'all know. And I've locked my brakes up before doing off road like this and kind of skids to the end. I like to grab them and really be able to kind of pull out of my turn when I'm off road. Anyway, so we're going downhill. You got all that in your mind. Uh, there's a left turn up there. A uh, uh, I don't know how many feet, but a good little ways up. But I'm seeing, okay, there's a left turn up there. So let me stick to the right. Not too far behind my buddy. I noticed him slow down a little bit. I was like, all right, he's just slowing down. Then next thing before I notice, he's actually stopping. Um, again, this happened so fast. Was he stopping before? And I didn't notice it. I mean, my depth perception is usually really good. And I'm, and I'm locked in right there. I'm locked into the whole ride. And, and that's kind of where I bring it back to the beginning where I said I don't have any footage, right? Because I just want to be like, Man, I'm always in front of the camera, whether it be on this channel or my main YouTube channel. You all know the Techni. It's like, I don't want to be in front of the camera. I want to sit there and enjoy the ride. Just be so focused and just take it all in, you know? So that, that plays into it right here. But we're going down there. Next thing you know, I, I notice he stopped. And again, I'm going that speed right there. So I slam my brakes. ABS is active. 600 pound bike downhill with gravel. Again, it's just momentum. It's, it's, it's physics, right? It's going to take a little while to stop. And it couldn't stop. So 
And the crazy thing, like when I was looking at it, the road's pretty big. You can fit two cars down it. I mean, you'd fit two cars and you'd be right on the edge. So that, that's about, it wasn't tight, but it wasn't massive either, you know, but there was plenty of room. So again, the turn's coming up. So I'm thinking, okay, well, let me go right. I had enough space just to get my bike by. And then when my buddy was stopping, right when I got to him, he, he took a little bit of a right. So he didn't know where I was behind him. He took a slight right right there and then... I think I just barely clipped him right there, you know, um, mainly foot pegs to foot pegs and probably my bags. I had my big saddle bags. And from there on, it was just literally downhill, you know. So I clipped him very lightly. And then, man, if I'm, if I'm thinking this right, I flew into the tree in front of me. And again, talking by the time I slammed my brakes, let's say 20 to 25 miles an hour, something like that going downhill. I'm not too sure what the speed was, right? So I hit that, and then I just start tumbling down the hill. The only thing I can remember is my foot or my leg going into this root, because it was like you're on the mountain. You've been to Tennessee, the Smoky Mountains, or anything like that. You, when you ride those roads and you see there's no barrier, you kind of see it just kind of go straight down. Uh, that's what this was. It was like, I don't know, maybe 10 feet like that, and then it started gradually going down like that, covered with poison ivy, by the way, which I'm starting to slightly heal up the poison ivy. Anyway, so the only thing I really remember is my leg going in there. And again, all this is happening so incredibly fast. And I'm, I see somehow my leg in this root. And I'm like, let me get my leg out of there before my leg breaks. Right. So I took it out and then I'm just going backwards. Right. You see those movies. This is how I explain it to people. You seen those movies like Lone Survivor, where you're tumbling, you do, 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 and then you're in the air. And then you're in the air. That's exactly what was happening. And, you know, I couldn't stop it. You know, you, you just couldn't. You're going so fast. You're just tumbling. Like in the movies, you're like, dude, why don't you just put your feet down and stop? Well, now I realize it and see like there's no stopping. So I'm going down. And then the only other thing I can really remember is my face coming straight up with the tree. It's just whack straight up in my visor. I still don't have it. Maybe it's on a mountain somewhere there. Um, that's the only thing. Luckily, I had a very good helmet. I had a Scorpion XO carbon fiber. I don't know. It was like a $500 helmet. Fantastic helmet. You know, it definitely saved my life right there. Anyway, so I was tumbling and then eventually I stopped down there. My bike was about 10, maybe 15 feet to the right of me. And it was upside down lodged on a rock. So I think the rock stopped it right there. As far as me, I guess that tree that my head hit slowed my momentum down a little bit. I'm not too sure. Again, it all happened so quick. And then, of course, you know, I'm sitting there. The first thing I take, I've broken my arm before right here Used to, when I skated. I think I was like 17 or whatever years old when I broke that. So I'm kind of used to broken bones, right? And, and, and when I remember seeing this, my arm down here, I was like, man, my elbow shouldn't be there. You know, it's it real freaky. But anyways, I want to talk about that. So now you kind of got the idea and we're going to talk about what could be corrected, what went wrong. We'll talk about all that. But I want to talk about the instance of the wreck and what's going through my mind. Um, again, just as a raw experience. Because again, it was the scariest thing in my life. And I want to try to reiterate that. So the accident happened. When it's happening, it's so quick. You know, I'm thinking like, why couldn't I stop myself on the hill? But, you know, anyways, I'm at the bottom of the hill. I don't know how, how much down. Again, a significant amount. And I'm just laying there on the ground and I'm just... Wow. Uh, the first thing I do is I check myself. I'm like, gosh, I hope my foot is not up by my head. You know, I'm checking everything, making sure I'm like, okay, I can move my arms. Nothing's like that. Okay. I had a little blood right here. You can see it gashed out some of my skin, took out some of my tattoo right there. I was like, okay, that's just a little blood, no bones, nothing. Okay. So let me try to get up. I tried to get up and I just couldn't. I went, I went down. Um, over here, you can see I got a cast on my ankle and that's pretty much what happened is I broke my ankle. That little uh, bone that sticks out of your ankle there, that was fractured. And then I had another or two other micro fractures and three sprains or something like that. The doctor said the sprains are worse than breaks, believe it or not. Anyways, I'm out for two months. So any, anyways, getting to that, other than the injuries and stuff, the craziest thing, you know, that happened. I was like, I was at the bottom of that hill. And the first thing that clicked in my mind after I, I checked myself and make sure, okay, I'm alive. I'm good. I, I'm going to make it through this. Um, it clicked in my head, my wife and my son, like just being straight raw with you guys. Like 
that's what clicked in my head real quick is my wife, my son, and I'm selfish, right? I, I know some of you guys might be like, ah, oh, it's an accident and it happens, but I'm just being raw with you guys. That's exactly what clicked into my head. Man, this could have been it. I could have been done. Um, and I got my wife and my son. My son's nine years old, right? They're my life. And then I was thinking, selfish. Like, dude, I'm riding a motorcycle to have fun. And we all know the dangers of motorcycles, right? When everything is never going to happen to me because I'm a safe and I'm cautious and this, that, or the other. But again, like this, it happened on a snap of the fingers. And it's just, when you're off that bike in an accident, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. There's really nothing you can control. You're in the elements and you're just flying. You know what I mean? You're doing your thing. So that was... Uh, pretty deep how that really hit me at the bottom of that hill you know and it stuck with me for a while during that whole process the crazy thing also is in these mountains at the hill there was no cell reception so uh luckily i got the new iphones and you can do the sos but recover the tree so i'm like all right let me get it let me get a you know a path through here so i can shoot the sos um so that was on top of it so i'm sitting there i'm like we're like what do we do it's, it's kind of all of us were in shock you know um, it, it was just so fast. And that's why I asked my buddy. I was like, man, what happened? He goes, I don't know, man. He goes, were you looking at your map? I'm like, no, man, I wasn't looking at my map. I honestly didn't know you were stopping, which is weird because again, my depth perception is usually fantastic. And I notice when something's slowing down, especially when in cars and stuff. But I think that the combination of the hill, the weight of the bike, and then his slight right turn kind of just, you know, just ended it. And, you know, talking about how could have I prevented it this has gone through my head a lot and everybody asked that that's that's what a lot of people ask well, what could have you done different what happened you know and i'm sure you know there's gonna be that great writer that's gonna leave the comment down below and oh you should have done this 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 you know well talking about that road being like two cars wide i told myself I and mean, even when i got to the top of the hill crawling out through this poison ivy you know what i mean i was like why didn't i go left why didn't I go left? And the only thing I can push in my mind was I was so locked in. I saw that space right there was just enough clear for my bike to get through, which was too risky. That's the one thing I could say is like, yeah, there was enough space, but it was right on that borderline of enough space. So I should have looked at that way. But again, going that fast, going downhill with a 600 pound bike, you just can't slow it down that quick. In my mind, I was thinking if I go left, well, that turn is up around the way there. And we've passed a few cars recently, right? So I'm like, well, I don't want to be going there and, you know, there'll be a car. And those are the things I was thinking. It's like, what's the worst situation? You know, I should have just slammed the brakes and laid down the bike. I don't know. I don't know. It all happened so quick, you know. I thought I had that path. I think that slight right turn on my buddy kind of, you know, made a, you know, the situation a little bit worse right there. But... I think, again, it's the combination of everything that was compiled there. Now, let me let me refresh you a little bit here. The crazy thing about this, why was my buddy slowing down? Let's talk about that. Why was he slowing down going downhill at this random part of the trail? Well, this, this sounds crazy, right? There was this lady up the hill, and she was there, I think she said about 30 minutes or 45 minutes before we ever even got there to that turn. She drove her car. It was a Nissan Murano. I'll throw a picture up. She drove her car off the cliff there. And she was with her dog. Her airbags are deployed and all sorts of crazy stuff. So that's what my buddy was stopping. Because he was going to check on her. I was so... And this is where I piece it all in. Again, I'm not recording. Uh, I'm paying attention. I was so locked in. Again, I saw that turn coming. I'm on a bigger bike. So again, I'm really focused. And I'm really paying attention to my terrain, right? And... uh he was stopping for her and I, I didn't even see her, right? I did not even see her. This is what happened. He goes, he goes, oh man, what happened? You okay? I'm like, I'm like, man, I didn't even notice you were stopping. He goes, did you not see her over there? I'm like, what are you talking about? No joke, I'm on the hill. I turn like that and I'm like, it's like a crazy dream. I'm like in my head, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. What is going on? I'm like looking over like, how many more cars are out here, you know? So I wasn't associated with her. She didn't cut me off. I didn't cut her off. I didn't hit her. She didn't hit me. We had nothing to do with this car. She was down that mountainside. She said 30 or 45 minutes before we even got there. And again, he was checking on her. So that, that's kind of what caused the whole thing. 
you know, is really just a crazy coincidence. And that's honestly where I piece it together. What could have I done different, you know? And I'll talk about what I think I'm going to do, but I think with motorcycles, it's like when someone cuts you off the road, right? I've been cut off by a semi truck on the highway off into the, not the median, but the emergency lane on the left side and where all the trash is. And I had to gun it past that before, you know, stuff on a motorcycle. It's like, if you miss that one slight thing, it can happen in an instant. Are you lucky enough to make it out with just a broken ankle like I was? Oh my gosh, am I beyond thankful and lucky that I'm alive, more or less just a broken ankle as much as it sucks? Like, holy smokes, this is, it's incredible, you know? But I think everything on a motorcycle like that can happen in a snap of the fingers. And of course, we all think, like you've heard me in my videos, I'm not aggressive, I don't really, I don't speed, I don't do skid tires, I keep ABS on, I'm a sightseer adventurer. You know what I mean? I'm not aggressive motocross type style. And I don't want to be. It's not my goal to be that way. I just like going on adventures, getting into nature and just riding like that, you know, and I could sit here and say, I'm cautious. I'm super cautious. I'm careful. But again, that split second, it happens. And when it happens, when you're on a motorcycle, it's not like a car where you hit it, your airbags are deployed. Well, you hit it, you tumble, you yada, 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 could have the bike fallen on me, could have, I hit that tree in my chest or my back and broken that, could have my leg got stuck and actually broken there. There's so many things that could have happened. And again, we all say we're cautious, yada, yada, yada. Um, if y'all watch my Smoky Mountain 500 video, right, we had four, uh, I say accidents, whatever, mishaps on that trip. Two guys went over the cliff. One guy, his bike got stuck in one of the roots, kind of like what my leg got stuck in. His bike got stuck there. Luckily, it would have gone down the mountain. Uh, the other guy, his went down, and it was luckily it was where one of those walk paths are to go look at a waterfall so he could pull his bike down and ride it up that path. Another guy, or two other guys, they were in turns, and they skid out. One guy went into, like, uh, the rail, and the other guy just, I wasn't there for that one, but I heard he just skid out, kind of scuffed up his elbow just a little bit. So, again, it's things like that. We're all cautious. We're all aware. But on a motorcycle, as we all know, you know, and it's kind of the risk we all accept, it happens in that split second. So now that we've talked about my wreck, uh, my process of it, what I could have done different, I think, and how it all happened, you kind of got an idea of it. Again, my bike was totaled. Insurance progressive was phenomenal. I had to check for my bike within like a week and a half, two weeks. People ask, are you going to ride again? Yeah, definitely going to ride again. With my leg bandaged up, I've been watching so many motorcycle videos. I'm shopping for bikes right now. I've talked to dealers. Hey, can you deliver this? You know, maybe if I had my Africa Twin DCT, I'll be out for a ride sooner, you know, because um, I can't really move my ankle too good. So yes, I'm going to ride again. Will I be scared when I get on a bike? I don't know. You know, I remember when I broke my arm when I was skating and I got back out to skating again, I was a little worried then. I don't think it's so much of, will I be scared? It's more or less the terrain I'm on in the situation I'm in, I'll kind of maybe tone it down and, you know, be a slow putter, you know, I, I don't know. But what I did realize and what I think I am going to do is step away from a lot of off-roading. I, I don't know if I say serious, right? But a little bit more technical Smoky 500, Georgia Traverse, where it's not just a regular fire road. I think I'll stick to my 300 LS for more of that kind of off-roading, right? Um, I still will get a bigger bike, you know? I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards an Africa Twin again, but mainly for touring and the occasional fire road. I won't take it on a main off-road type stint like the Smoky 500 or anything like that again, but I will ride it down a basic fire road or something like that for sure. But for anything a little more serious or like dedicated, just an off-road journey, I'll stick to a smaller dual sport. And yeah, this could happen on a smaller dual sport, of course, as well. But I think with something like that, number one, I can stop it easier. It's a little easier to manipulate in a situation like that. Heck, I could have just, you know, had a more peace of mind. Like, let me just throw the bike down and jump off or something like that. When you're on a big bike, I mean... You're part of it, you know, and you got to slow down that 600 pounds. So I think that's what I, I might do. I'm debating other things too. Like, do I just want a touring bike? You all know if, if you've watched my videos, I love touring. I love riding a good distance. And when I'm riding, I just going through small towns, finding a cool place to eat, you know, just stopping through them. I love it. It just throws you back in time. 
those are some of my favorite rides other than my adventurous exploring off-road rides. So I'm debating like Chaser 9 GT. They got the GT Plus coming out. I love Triumphs. After riding that Triumph, it's like, man, no machine is like that. The clutch, the throttle response, how it's put together is a premium machine. Thinking about a T120 or a Scrambler. But again, you all know I love the Africa Twin. And I got rid of the Africa Twin because it was a handful off-road. But if I'm not doing much off-roading with it, it's honestly probably the perfect fit. So more than likely, I will go back to an Africa Twin. And yes, I will ride again. Once I hit the road, how much it will affect me? Only once I saddle up, that'll tell. So anyways, thank you for coming along and just hearing my story here. I want to hear your guys' comments down below. Like, not your MSF, your experienced rider. Oh, you did this, this, you know? I want to hear if you've been in an accident. Kind of what was the mind process of you? Because again, it really... That was probably the biggest thing for me. It's like, holy smokes. Like, life is more than just me and my excitements, right? My son was and my wife, right? That When that clicked in my head, I'm like, gosh, you know, that, that was probably the biggest thing that hit to me, you know? So I want to hear from you guys if you've ever been in an accident. What was your mind process? How'd you, how'd you go through it? You know what I mean? So anyways... Thank you so much for uh, coming along for this. A lot of my videos, we won't be riding. Doc set them out for two months. I'm about three weeks in, maybe three weeks in. So we got we got another month or so ahead of us here before we actually start riding. But uh, I'm shopping bikes, so I might do some more sit-down conversations like this. You all know I love just getting in front of the camera and talking motorcycles. Usually I'm on the, ride, on the motorcycle talking. Maybe we'll have to talk at the desk here a little bit. So, I don't know. Maybe those videos won't be uh, successful. But hopefully you guys come along for some of those looks. I love hanging out and talking shop with you all. So, again, thanks so much for coming by. Hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully I never got to make a video like this again. Um, but, again, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope I catch you in the next adventure. Bye now.